in three words, author, illustrator, entertainer. Young and brash, this boy named Kevin wrote his first book at age 11. Where the Wild Things Are was a favorite of his. Its influence made him an illustration whiz. He attended the Maryland Institute of Art. That's where he got a really good start. A Froggy Went a Courtin was his first published book. It's his favorite and been banned. Now that's worth a look. <laughs> of his dozens of books, one never wearies. Take, for example, the Miss Malarkey series. Gimme Cracked Corn and I Will Share is filled with chickens that will make you stare. It was on the bestseller list for three whole days. <laughs> You'll crack up at the puns he displays. His books have clever titles that will make you roar. None of Kevin's stories are ever a bore. How They Croaked will get your attention. On NPR, it got a mention. So if you like history, this one's for you. It's full of facts and gore and goo. Kevin visits 70 schools a year, now 47 states, both far and near. He makes kids want to draw and write, and they think he is out of sight. Baltimore, with his wife and sons, is where he draws and writes his puns. So hold on to your sides and get ready to laugh, but be careful not to split in half. Enough of this rhyme, no more dilly-dally. Let's give a big welcome to Kevin O'Malley! <laughs> I'm a kind of guy who needs a little medication, so I have to I have a hard time staying around the microphone, so I yell loud though. I'm gonna show you a magic trick and I'm gonna teach you how to do it so you can take your brothers and sisters' money. See the quarter? You take the quarter, you grab the quarter, and you blow. <laughs> Wanna see it again? Okay. You take the quarter like this, you grab the quarter, which hand is it in? Uh, I'm impressive. Here's how you do it. You put your hand out flat like this, you put it between your middle finger and your thumb. You make the shape of an L like on a fifth grader's forehead, and you slide the thumb underneath, and you drop the quarter. Which hand is it in? Does anybody think it's in this hand? Are you sure? Really? Come on, girlfriend, I just showed you. It's right there. <laughs> you work with me here. We don't have a lot of time. Okay. Take it like this. Drop the quarter. Which hand is it in? This one, right? Not this one. This one. Wrong. It's in my lap. Now, the reason you don't know how to do this is because you're kids and you're not very smart. So, <laughs> so I will do it in slow motion for you. <laughs> Don't watch this hand. Did you see it? Okay, this is the best way to do the trick. trick is the secret to writing. It's controlling people's minds. When I go like this, everybody goes, ah, if I do this with kindergartners, they go flying across the room. <laughs> the secret is controlling people's minds, and it's the same with writing. All you kids have to learn to write and write well, not text well, or tweet well, because one day you're going to have a job, and you're going to want more money from your boss. You can't write a letter to your boss that says, yo, Bobby, yo, snap, give me money, yo. Because your boss is going to say, yo, Bubba, get out of my building. But if you write it well, you control the boss's mind. And your wallet will grow fatter. <laughs> now, I didn't understand this till I got to eighth grade. Because drawing is exactly the same thing. Drawing is simply about controlling people's minds. And I didn't get this till I got to eighth grade. My teacher's name was Mr. Snell. He had a beard under his chin and a ponytail and a chain attached to his wallet. Because he was a middle school teacher. 
He walked very slowly. The bell would ring for the beginning of class. His hand shook. In hindsight, he was teacher on, on, on medication, teacher on the verge of a nervous breakdown, a true middle school teacher. I thought you had to be the best at drawing, and I have never been the best at anything in my life. I played soccer for seven years. I never scored a goal. Don't you laugh. I still go to a doctor for that one. Mr. Snell was an odd man. He would, he would do bathroom passes, one letter at a time, with dip pen and ink. You'd go up to the desk and say, can I go to the bathroom? And he would go, okay. And he would take out a pen and he would start. He said, Kevin, you knucklehead. Drawing is about controlling people's minds. I got gotcha. you. Love this part. See, what did I tell you? <laughs> How am I going to do this? Let's see. That's great. Does that work? I don't worry, we'll just work through it. It's okay, I'll stay low. Okay, so he says, Kevin, you knucklehead. Drawing is about controlling people's minds. And I'm like, what are you talking about, old man? And he shows me this drawing. He says, what is this drawing? And I said, oh, it's ladybugs having a race up a tree. I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. How about an arm with something a doctor should take a look at? I thought, oh, good Lord, <laughs> give me the big gloves. <laughs> oh, that shouldn't be squishy. <laughs> oh, but look, you push down on that one, the other one goes like this. <laughs> so, that's a great, what, what is this drawing? Does anybody know? What do you think it is? It's a bear climbing a tree. Who can see the bear climbing the tree? For those of you who can't see it, it's very simple. This is the tree trunk. And those are the bear's feet. He's on the other side. Now, is this a good drawing of a bear? No, it's a great drawing. Why? Because I don't have to draw the bear. <laughs> I even had a little girl look at this one and say, oh, that bear is cute. <laughs> yes, yes. Because once you have people seeing that, you can do the next big thing. The bear stopped climbing the tree. I'm just hanging on. And then you can do the next drawing. Bear's falling off the tree. And then you can do the greatest drawing in the series. Bear fell off the tree. You cannot do a better drawing of a bear that's fallen off a tree than that one. The little girl, she was like, what's wrong? She was crying. He said, what's wrong? She said, was the bear okay? And I'm an American writer. I said, the bear died. <laughs> <laughs> the next picture he showed me was this one. I said, oh, that's a circle. <laughs> oh, that's a donut. <laughs> oh, I know what this is. This is a donut at Dunkin' Donuts that doesn't want to be taken by a cop. Get back. Get back, man. Seriously, don't touch me, man. Take the jelly. <laughs> what else could this be? What else could it be? Come on, raise your hand. What could it be? What? The boy with the nose in the middle of his face. An eyeball with a stick going through it. The boy finds it in the woods. What could it be? What? A lollipop so you can fight with your brother. Mine, 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 mine. Handles, oh, handles on a lifesaver so you don't get your fingers sticky. 
<laughs> oh, not too much peppermint. I'll put that away for later. <laughs> How about handles on a frying pan for people who have to be really careful? How about handles on a toilet for people who need to be really careful? <laughs> How about a target for your brother to hold? Hold still. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, Mom will be mad. Okay. Fire when ready. <laughs> How about a plate falling off a table? Mom, he did it. You know, the power of drawing is you get to a position where you can tell people what it is, and just like the magic trick, they'll see it. And so this is a, uh, this is a boy wearing a sombrero riding a bicycle. <laughs> now, is this a good drawing of a boy wearing a sombrero riding? No, it's a great drawing, man. I don't have to draw the boy on a bike. How many people can see this? He's gonna make a left-hand turn, he's got a nose like mine. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> That's a little zinc oxide in there. <laughs> the next picture, the last picture Mr. Snell showed me was this. And I said, oh, that's a hole in the paper. You know, it's a black bear in a snowstorm, one of those kinds of things. It's, a, it's an engorged tick. Uh, no, this is my best friend. And he's very far away. Can you see him far away? He's coming down the road. Can you see him coming down the road? You know what's freaky about my friend? He has a little teeny tiny head, two long arms, two sticky legs. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so this drawing is fantastic. You can, you can use this three times in a book. You write. My friend was coming to visit me. And people say, oh, that's nice. Come on, friend, I have sandwiches, you know. On the next page, you use the same drawing, and you write, my friend was a freak of nature. And people say, oh, that's true. I see where the sandwiches go in, but where do they come out? <laughs> <laughs> and on the last page, you can do, my friend had to go home. And people will say, oh, that's sad. Read that again. And you know you've done the job of a writer of an illustrator. You have controlled people's minds. I know. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story. Now, this is unrelated to my books, but I just like doing it. This is called a storyline. See, it's a line. This is the beginning. What do you think that is? <laughs> Way to go. Is that on the statewide exam? You'll kick on that one. 40 minutes into any motion picture, you guys go get to see. This will happen. That is plot point one. You remember PP1. When you're writing a story, boys, <laughs> PP1, you gotta have it. PP1 is when something happens to the main character that changes his or her life. Halfway through the motion picture, there will be a chase scene. And that's just to make you go, oh, wow, that's awesome. That was sweet. 40 minutes till the end of the picture. This will happen. That's plot point two, PP2. You gotta have a PP2. You know what you can't do, boys? Once upon a time, there was a guy and he blew up. You can't say, once upon a time, there was a guy and, and he went down the road and he blew up. But if you write the story well with a PP1 and a PP2, at the end, you might be able to blow him up. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the story of uh, Aladdin, but I don't particularly care for Disney movies. I, I really don't like the Disney girl. She has enormously large eyes, and she has two of them, um, and, and that means she has no room for brains. If she, that's why she walks on her tiptoes. She's like, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Disney girls like Barbie dolls have freakishly long necks. They can't eat. They you know. And they, but they have no waste, they can't poop. I mean, it's good. <laughs> Come on, ladies, you know what it's like having tea with Barbie. You, know? <laughs> you say, here, Barbie, hold the tea. She says, I can't, man, they glued my fingers together. <laughs> my hand, <laughs> my hand is so small, <laughs> I could use it as a Q-tip, but I can't get it to my ear because they built me without elbows. <laughs> this is not a good role model. They make bad decisions. That's the part that really gets me. In Mulan, the girl saves all of China, man. 
Beginning of the movie, she's got the little dress on, the sticks in the hair, and then, and then she's all pretty, pretty. Then she has to go to war, and she does the Matrix thing, you know, like, <laughs> and she saved China, which is very impressive. But the emperor says, come and work for me, and she says, no, I have to go home to father. Girls, if the emperor ever offers you a job, pick up your phone, call your father. You know what he'll say? You go, girl! That's my girl, baby. Yeah, that's sweet. Yo, oh, that's fantastic. You're making me cry, baby. Your mom and I'll come visit you. I love you, baby. Yeah. Not Mulan. She goes home and she sits under the lotus blossom tree. And who comes along? The Disney guy. Hello, I'm exceedingly good looking. I'm Asian, but I look remarkably like Tom Cruise. Look, I have one hair that never moves. Sometimes it's a weapon and dental floss. <laughs> I don't like these stereotypes. I don't like these tropes. So I'm going to tell you a story of Aladdin. But we're going to change it. We're going to make Aladdin a girl. Look, she has an ample waist, she can eat, she can poop, she's healthy. Sadly, she has legs like Allie McBeal. And she has, and she has absolutely appalling taste in footwear. I, you gotta get the DSW, girl. Harrison Ford finds that attractive. I'm still uncomfortable with that. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> this is Ellen. One day, Ellen is walking by the home of the wealthiest woman in all of Gaithersburg, and she looks up in the window, and standing there is the son of the wealthiest woman, Johnny Goodlooking. Ladies, this is for you. He's got that thyroid condition I know you find so attractive. <laughs> Mr. Custom Shirt Man. <laughs> so Ellen walks by the house, and she says, she sees the guy, and she says, oh, man, I wish I could meet that guy. Must be extraordinary to be so rich, but I'm never going to have a chance to because I wear baked potatoes on my feet. Now, in the old story of Aladdin, we got to change this lady's life. We're getting to plot point one. We got to change Ellen's life. So, in the old story of Aladdin, who's the bad guy? Jafar. So, we're going to have to make it a woman. Do not make it your teacher or your mother. It's a granny. who also should go to DSW. A granny with a walker. Five years from now, I will not be doing this joke. And her name is not Jafar, her name is Jenny Farr. Now, in the old story of Aladdin, where do they go to get the lamp? To a cave, the Cave of Wonders, ooh. But we're in Gaithersburg, where would you go? Go, you go to the park, that's nice. That park is always nice. Where would you, what? Walmart? Excellent, she says, come with me to Walmart. And Ellen says, oh, sweet, senior discount, yeah, baby. And they, they head down to Walmart. Oh, actually, Jenny Farr says, walk it this way. And Ellen, Ellen says, seriously? Okay. <laughs> five days later, they arrive at the Walmart. And they go in aisle five. She goes halfway down, Jenny Bar, halfway down aisle five. And she picks up her walker and she goes, a rooga, rooga, rooga. And a giant hole opens up. Well, we've changed her life. We've got an awesome scene of explosions. Because a giant hole opens up in the floor of aisle five at the Walmart. Ellen says, you're in trouble. You made a big hole. Walmart sales associate fall down and go boom. <laughs> I don't believe they get health insurance. 
Jenny Farr says, climb down and get me the lamp. Helen says, in no way. Climb down and get me the lamp. Don't think so. Climb down and get me the lamp. Uh-uh. <laughs> Jenny Farr picks up her walker. She points it at Ellen. <laughs> Ellen says, whoa, girlfriend, calm down. Let's get you over to the pharmacy, get you back on the meds. Calm down. Watch Deepak Chopra on Dr. Phil. Calm down. She says, I'll climb down into the hole. If I find the lamp, you'll pull me up though, right? Oh yeah, I'd pull you up. <laughs> so she climbs down and she feels around and she finds the lamp. And she calls up and she says, I found the lamp. Pull me up. Throw me the lamp. Pull me up. Throw me the lamp. Pull me up. Throw me the lamp. Pull me up. <laughs> So she does, she pulls her up to the top, and when she gets to the top, she snatches the lamp out of Ellen's hand. She puts her foot on Ellen's head, and <laughs> Ellen falls. Whoa! <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Jenny Barr says, I finally have the lamp. Ha ha ha! On nuts. <laughs> Throw me the lamp. <laughs> Pull me up. <laughs> Throw me the lamp. Pull me up. up. <laughs> Throw me the lamp! <laughs> Pull me up, I'm falling for you. Pull me up. I'm... Does that look like Beyonce? Single ladies? No. It's better with the bustier. It's the wrong crowd, though. <laughs> so she says, no, I will not pull you up. I'll find somebody else to get the lamp for me. She picks up a walker, and wooga, 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 she closes up the hole. See how nothing's exploded yet? Good. <laughs> so Ellen is sitting in the hole, understandably upset with herself. She's looking at the lamp. And she's trying to figure out, what do you suppose the old woman wanted with the lamp? She stares at it for a very long time. Sometimes, I think the bump on her head made her a little slow. She's putting lipstick on her head to make up her mind. She thinks the Canadian border pays rent. <laughs> no, no, don't leave. <laughs> So what is the job of the genie? Because when you write a story, everything you put in your story has a job to do. You don't put it in there unless you know what the job is. What's the job of the genie? What does he give you? Three wishes, right? And what does the genie want for him or herself? It's freedom from the lamp. So it doesn't matter. As long as you get those basic things in it, you could make it a toilet. No, as long as the toilet says, I'll give you three wishes, but then I want to be on display at Lowe's Home Improvement. So wooga, wooga, wooga. And suddenly, the cave starts to smell horrible. It's a baby. Ellen says, sweet mother of pearl! What is that smell? And the genie says, hey man, get off my back. I've been in there 10,000 years. How about you change my diaper? <laughs> she says, I give you three, she says, I give you three wishes you change my diaper. She says, I want four for that bad boy. <laughs> you gotta do something about this bottle. It's like the kind of find in the car after about three weeks. <laughs> so she changes the diaper, now you have wishes. What would you wish for? What would you wish for? to get out of the hole. So now she's standing in aisle five at the Walmart. Good, good. Anything else? Oh, you greedy little bugger. Unlimited wishes? <laughs> you can't have unlimited wishes. The story would never end. She gets this and 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 this. And you know what would happen with you? You'd get to a million, 999,999 and you'd say, I want a million more. <laughs> what would you wish for? Yeah. How, how big a house? 
Beyonce house? No, a little smaller. Oh, good. What a surprise. <laughs> now, remember, when you write a story, everything you put in your story has a job to do. Who did she wish to meet at the beginning of the story? The son of the wealthiest woman, right? She says, I wish I could meet the son of the wealthiest woman. Suddenly, big cloud of smoke. She finds herself in the home of, of, of the richest woman, and he is standing in front of a full-length mirror. She says, hello, my name is Ellen. He says, I'm good looking. She says, yes, yes, you are. What's it like to be the son of the wealthiest woman? And he says, I'm good looking. And she says, yes, yes, you are. Do you have any hobbies? And he says, I'm good looking. <laughs> and she says, oh, no, that was a terrible wish. I could have just knocked on the door and found out that this guy was that dull. Well, she has one wish left. What do you wish for? All the wishes back <laughs> to repeat the last 30 minutes or so. Don't you have a wish? Nothing? Does anybody have it? Don't you have a wish? What's your wish? A million wish guy. Uh, All right, so you never have to change another diaper again. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yes? Okay, vengeance, you want to blow the granny up. Okay. Vengeance is yours, saith you. Okay. You could cure world hunger, but your idea is vendetta. Okay. It's okay, you're a kid. So, no, I'll tell you the way to do this. This is the way to get all the wishes you want. Your teachers won't like it, but I don't care. It's called a run-on sentence. <coughs> Alan says... I wish I had a jet plane on that jet plane was a large screen TV and hooked up with a Sony PlayStation. Next out was the fridge and the fridge were desserts. All the desserts I could ever want to eat and not get fat. I could travel around the world. Could every major university become a doctor, 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 Ellen win a billion dollars. And suddenly there's a plane outside. Ellen says, oh yeah, baby. And she starts to run. And then she hears the genie like, hey man, what about me? Well, she left her wish with an and on the end. She says, and the genie's a real baby. And then she hears it. Wah. Wah. And she freezes in her tracks. And she looks back and she says, oh, no, 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 that's not my baby. I'll leave the baby with Johnny Goodlooking. But she pictures a baby with one hair. <laughs> Check out my fresh onesie. <laughs> I got the no leaky diaper, yo, snap. <laughs> she thinks I'll leave the baby with Jenny Farr, but she pictures the baby at, at a preschool with a Fisher Price walker going, play date, play date. <laughs> Well, she left her wish with an and on the end. She says, and I wish my fiancé was on the plane. And he insisted on changing all the diapers. If he happened to be studying medicine at Johns Hopkins Hospital, that'd be fine. If it like George Clooney, great. <laughs> Suddenly, there's a voice outside. Ellen, dear, hurry. Bring the baby. We're off to Paris. <laughs> now, the hardest part to writing a story is coming up with an ending. Kids, do you think I write the endings of my books for you guys? No, I write them for people with money. <laughs> the last picture in this book might be something like this. If anybody ever says get on a plane that looks like this, don't. Unless it's piloted by that guy who dropped it in the Hudson, because he could fly anything, I think. The plane is flying over the Atlantic Ocean. And I know what you're thinking. If you were flying in a plane over the Atlantic Ocean like this, you'd be screaming, up, get up, dear God, get up, get up. And if you were the pilot, you'd be yelling, window, window, window. I said, hold on. <laughs> the plane is flying through the clouds. The sun is setting in the west, which is a good thing, because if it ever sets in the east, I think the Mayans would have been right. Look, it's like a kindergartner drew a hand. <laughs> and the only sound you hear the entire way to Paris is the sound of
What is it? That's because Ellen forgot to wish for Benadryl. <laughs> and that is the end of the story. I don't have any idea how much time I have. I, can, I, have, I really have no idea. How many more minutes? Roughly like 10. Really? You poor people. <laughs> All you folks out there, how many of you draw? How about the adults? When did you stop drawing? Raise your hand if you can remember. I'm going to guess it's fourth grade. Fourth grade, you looked at somebody else's drawings in your class, and you said, I can't do that, and you stopped. And they allowed you. I had to continue taking math. <laughs> I don't think it's fair. When I become the two-bit despot that I dream of being, everyone will draw. I was a stick figure man. I would make a head like this, and I put a dot right there, and a dot right there, and I put a mouth on them, and then I would put two dots right there. And my mom would say, why did you put two dots right there? I say, mom, that's all I ever see when I look up at school. <laughs> Teachers ought to consider teaching like this. You know, just, it's unsettling on a young mind to see stalactites in the morning. I would put arms on them like this. Look, I'm a ball on a stick. <laughs> Ah, uh, na, 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 <laughs> I would put a body on him like this. And I'd put a hand over here. Recognize the sun? <laughs> <laughs> no, ha it happened to me, and it, it'll happen, it happened to most of you adults. You, you drew all the time, and at some point you decided you couldn't do it. And I stopped because my friend David, he was drawn like this. And he put a shirt on him, and a pair of boots, and a pair of underwear, and he put a cape on the back and he called him Super Money Man. And I looked at that and I said, oh, that's sweet. You know what I said when I looked at mine? I just drew a guy holding the sun. So I stopped drawing because I thought you had to be the best. But there really is no such thing as the best. There's always going to be somebody better than you. And it really doesn't matter. Because your job in school, you know what it is? Find something you would love to do when you're big. Because it's really bad being big and going to a job you hate. But I thought I could do children's books. But then I saw my friends drawing. So I stopped drawing in front of people. I would go under my bed to draw. But underneath my bed was very tight, man. And my brother's dirty sweat sock was in my face. And I'd be gacking up hairballs like a cat. <laughs> I found a hair in my mouth, like. <laughs> and I'd come out with pictures of people who looked like this. And I showed them to my mom. I said, look, mom, I'm terrible. She said, darling boy, light of my life. She said, get out from under the bed. <laughs> Draw at the desk. <laughs> and I said, no, because I was turning into a teenager. What's going to happen to you guys? You're going to get one big eyebrow goes right across your forehead. You're going to start walking like Bigfoot. <laughs> Some of you will start walking like Shaggy, which is just weird. You'll learn to sit in chairs and mutter. <laughs> Chipotle. <laughs> and that was me, eighth grade. Mr. Snell taught me about clay. He said, make something with this piece of clay. And I didn't want to do it in front of anybody because I was embarrassed. I thought I was terrible, you know? And, and he hands me a hunk of clay and he makes some. I said, I can't, man. And he said, make something. And I said, I can't, man. And his eyelids started twitching like this. You don't want to see your middle school teacher's eyelid twitching like this. He said, make something! And his ponytail shot out. And the ponytail holder went ripping across the room. Don't laugh. My friend was walking in the door. He said, no! So I took the clay and I found out it was cool. 
You can go, hello. You can make that great sound. <laughs> Don't do it again. One more time. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> and I made a little man about that big. It was not the best in the class because I've never been the best. But I realized at that point that I can try doing children's books and I've managed to do 72 children's books now. But, 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 most of my books are out of print. Most of them are third world fuel. So come down to politics and prose, buy one of my books. When you get done with it, we're keeping the poor warm. So thank you very much for listening to me. Have a very good day.